Hey guys, so in this lesson today, I'm going to talk about uh, multi-factor authentication, sort of an overview of um, ways you can enable it and uh, pros and cons of um, each method. And um, hopefully this will help you to um, come up with a strategy when it comes to enabling MFA for your organization. Um, so obviously I've logged into portal.office.com um, and I've created a trial tenant uh, purely for testing purposes. Um, and uh, we'll just go ahead and click on Admin Center. So when you sign up for a Microsoft uh, 365 Enterprise subscription uh, for the very first time, um, you will be asked to um, set up multi-factor authentication basically for every user. Um, that is because there's a setting in Azure AD called uh, default security settings. This setting is turned on by default. Um, so um, that's just to, as a safety measure, uh, Microsoft has enabled that setting by default. So um, if you do not have any fancy requirements or you do not need any um, customization for your multi-factor authentication policy, uh, you can um, leave that setting turned on. Um, and you wouldn't have to set MFA from scratch. Um, but I think one downside for this is there's very little customization that you can do with security defaults um, as there are set a uh, bunch of set, set rules by uh, Microsoft. So I'm going to go ahead and show you where uh, security defaults are located. Um, in my tenant, um, by default, obviously, um, this setting is turned off, but when you have a look at it for the first time, it'll be turned on for you guys. So <laughs> click on um, um, Azure Active Directory, and um, we are looking for properties, which is right here, um, and click on Manage Security Defaults. Um, depending on whether you want to keep it turned on, you don't have to do anything. If you want to turn it off, select uh, the setting to obviously no and click save here and um, security defaults will be turned off. Uh, the old school way of um, setting up uh, multi-factor authentication was to enable it per user. So I'm just going to click on my test user and show you where that setting is. I'm going to go ahead and click on manage uh, multi-factor authentication um, mm. and um, this setting it's all right, but obviously when you have got hundreds of users, this is obviously not going to be practical. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time here, you know, waste a lot of time. Uh, so as you can see, I've got a bunch of um, test users created in here. Um, some of them I've enabled and some of them are disabled. So if I want to um, go ahead and enable multi-factor authentication uh, for a test user, in this, obviously in this case, um, just click on the select the preferred user and go ahead and click enabled and you uh, are now enabled multi-factor authentication for Julia uh, in this case. So um, when Julia logs in for the first time to portal.office.com, Obviously, um, she'll be asked to enter her contact information and sign up for multi-factor authentication, depending on her preference or your business requirements. She can select uh, Microsoft Authenticator or um, get a text code from Microsoft or a phone call um, for authentication. Now, uh, the preferred way or the Microsoft's suggested way of doing this is through conditional access. Now, bear in mind that conditional access requires you to have um, Azure Premium P1 license. Um, if you've got an E3, for example, P1 is already um, included in any way, uh, but if not, you'll have to um, get a Azure P1 license separately if you wish to um, set up conditional access. Now, conditional access is something that it's not just for MFA. It's a very cool feature. You can do a bunch of cool things with that. Uh, but in this um, short video, I'm just going to really, uh, talk about uh, creating an MFA policy. So um, go into um, your Azure Active Directory, and we are going to click on security and conditional access. Obviously, this is um, 
uh, uh, test policy that I created a little while ago. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it so I can show you guys how to create one from scratch. Uh, basically, it's very straightforward. Click on new uh, policy. It's going to say MFA policy. Now, um, I'm going to keep it simple, but you can play around with this. Um, if you want to enable it for a test user group, you can just do that. I'm just going to go ahead and enable it for all the users. It's always best to set an exclusion in case once you enable this policy, nobody can log into your portal. There's at least one person who can. Um, so in this case, we're going to exclude um, the global, global um, administrator of um, my tenant. Uh, so if something goes wrong, I still have control of the tenant. Um, the set to all users. Remember, when it comes to policies across the board for all Microsoft services, exclusions always take over inclusions. So exclusions get priority over inclusions. Um, the next um, rule is to define to which applications this rule is going to apply. Obviously, the best way to go is to set it to all cloud apps. If you want any app not to be prompted uh, for MFA, you can set an exclusion. We've got a bunch of applications here, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it at all cloud apps. Now, the conditions, um, depending on what condition you want to set the MFA prompt. Now, in this case, you can set it to use a REST site and REST device platforms locations and so forth. Uh, the most common and I think the most practical way of doing this is with the uh, locations. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, configure the setting, click yes, and I'm going to set it to any location. But once again, you can um, specify certain locations um, which you want or do not want to be prompted. So one really good way of doing this is select any location in the inclusions and go ahead into exclusions and exclude all trusted locations uh, or select any location that you do not want to be prompted. For example, if you've got users who are logging into your Microsoft applications online from um, your corporate network um, in a corporate office, um, you do not want them to be prompted for MFA all the time. Uh, this would be a good way to provide them with that better user experience. So, I've already got a, te uh, a trusted um, test location created. Now, bear in mind that these trusted named locations in Azure AD, they require you to have a public IP address. Um, always remember that. Um, it's important. Now, if you do want to include internal non-routable private IP addresses um, into trusted locations, uh, you will need to have an in-house um, MFA server. Uh, it's a bit complicated, which I'm not going to go into today. And to be um, quite frank with you guys, I don't think many organizations um, use that feature these days anyway, uh, because of the overhead. So I'm just going to go ahead and select my new test um, trusted location in here uh, and select. So once this policy goes live, um, if you are logging in from a trusted location, you will not be prompted for the MFA. Um, and uh, apart from that, any other location, you will be asked to um, verify your identity through a multi-factor authentication. Now we uh, have come to the access control setting in here. Obviously, we want uh, them to grant access. And we want them to grant access based on multi-factor authentication. So you just go ahead and uh, click enable the first option, require multi-factor authentication. Um, and um, obviously there are a bunch of other settings which may or may not apply to you depending on your situation. But for MFA, specifically for this MFA policy, just leave it at this um, and go ahead and um, click select. So um, that's pretty much it. And we're going to turn the policy on and then click create. Voila. That's all. Um, so thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you learned something new. 
Um, and if you guys have got any questions around enabling multi-factor authentication um, in your um, organization, um, please leave a comment um, below and um, I'll try to answer your questions as much as I can. I'll also leave um, Microsoft links um, if you want to refer to official documentation um, that also helps uh, to refresh your memory from time to time. Um, thanks again for um, watching the video. I'll catch you guys up with another one very soon. Have a great day, guys.